eventful past couple of weeks or past couple of days actually considering everything that's been going on with the European Super League um, developments you know happening legitimately every single minute it feels like um, I'm kind of glued to my Twitter feed refreshing and following certain journalists and making sure I'm kept abreast of what's going on checking the soccer subreddit and stuff like just things have been going at 100 miles per hour but essentially the crux of the issue is that over the weekend um, there was due to be an announcement for the Champions League reform. They were going to expand the Champions League out to more teams. Of course, some of the bigger sides were naturally against this because that would mean the pie would get split between more teams who were necessarily the biggest draws, let's say. But then, of course, in terms of being a democratic um, cup tournament and allowing more teams to play, it maybe opens up to more places and makes it into more of a spectacle, adds more fixtures. You know you know the game in it, right? Um, governing bodies are going to want to have more fixtures to play because that would mean they have more earning potentials. But then if you're a big club, one of the kind of quote-unquote top six clubs in the uk or top clubs in europe you're probably not gonna like the fact that you're having to split your pie with clubs like young boys or shacks the next you'd rather keep um the majority of it because most people are really in that torment to see you play right that's the kind of preface right there so there was always going to be a, a reaction against that but we i don't think we kind of assumed that they were going to flesh out a complete plan with a website with kind of you know backers already lined up in terms of what they're going to do with the european super league but that's basically what happened over the weekend and to counteract that a group of clubs, I think at the moment it's 13 of them so far, um, or 12 or something, um, came together and basically put together a plan for the European Super League, which eventually, which effectively would involve these top six clubs here from the UK, uh, May United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal and Tottenham. And considering, you know, and a couple other teams, effectively not from the rest of Europe, actually, only from two other leagues, but still the premise around it was there's going to be this league system with all these top European clubs that's going to replace the Champions League. Um, but then, of course, naturally, Champions League um, governing body were not for it whatsoever. And it kicked off a complete shit show of a situation and basically left fans in a complete uproar into what's going on. So let's just kind of quickly go over exactly what the European Super League is. And I can give you some of my thoughts and opinion, opinions around it on the other side. So what's happened 12 of europeans leading football clubs have announced that they have agreed to establish a new midweek competition the european super league governed by the founding clubs the proposal involves the clubs forming their own competition to rival the UEFA champions league which clubs are involved the big six as i mentioned plus ac milan um atletico madrid barcelona inter juve uh real madrid and uh, maybe some others considered maybe psg right? it continues on and uh, by munich i think i have extended the invitation to them it continues it's anticipated that further three clubs will join ahead of the inaugural season which according to the club is intended to commence as soon as practical all right um german giant Bayern munich and british dortmund uh, do not included or nor are french champions paris saint germain it continues here why has this come about now the clubs say that the formation of the super league comes at a time when the global pandemic has accelerated instability of the existing european football economic model further to uh, for a number of years the founding clubs have made the objective of improving the quality and intensity of existing european competitions throughout each season and creating a format of top clubs and top players to compete on a regular basis um so effectively what they're basically proposing is they're basically saying that they would much rather have more games that feature you know real madrid versus liverpool as opposed to real liverpool versus you know what celtic or something right they want the big teams facing the big teams season in season out um which then goes to show which where i think a lot of people that say are oh, some of the champions league draws are fixed i don't think so because i think if they could get away with ensuring more of the bigger sides face each other they would but i think it just spoiled the integrity of the entire competition and part of the beauty and the romance of it is the fact that you know smaller clubs can face bigger clubs and the potential of beating them in one of cup competitions um so i think the fact that you know you have so little of those big games happening um you know in some seasons depending you know on what goes on is kind of evidence that it's not as fixed as people think they are maybe it's fixed in terms of the league positions and stuff and the t and the leagues themselves because you look at the german league you know Bayern munich are going to qualify for champions league literally every season that kind of stuff but in terms of the draw i'm not too sure it continues the pandemic has also shown 
that our strategic vision and sustainability commercial approach are required to enhance the value and support of the benefit of the entire European football pyramid. However, Sky Sports News reporter um, says that he um, he has come about now for one reason, only for one reason, only the reason is happening. Now he says it's because of the global pandemic. Finances of the biggest clubs have been hit. I've been saying, I keep, uh, I keep saying it is about money. And if you look at the finances of the club, like Man United playing the Champions League, they make about 50, 40 to 80 million in a good year if they win it. If they play in a new year's competition, they get a check of 250 million to 300 million to begin with. Then in the future, they will get three times as much um, a season that they get for the Champions League, I'm assuming from TV rights. If you're you're looking at 200 to, 50, 200 to 250 million in TV rights, they'll be able to sell some of the rights to the games themselves on their own channels and the broadcast rights all over the world. So just imagine that, a May night app where you can essentially stream any game you want from all over the world for a little as what, 199 maybe up towards a 40 99 you know you said it's a no-brainer really and it goes on what does this mean for the champions league if the super league goes ahead it would effectively rival um and then hope to replace the champions league sunday's developments came just after 24 hours after the uefa were due to discuss the proposed champions league reforms the reforms were seen as an attempt to reach a compromise with the clubs in favor of a breakaway competition by offering those by offering them more matches. Um, the reform were planned to come into effect in 2024, expanding the Champions League to 36 teams, adjusting the format and increasing the number of matches from 125 to 225, which is wild. The reforms were intended to favor the club central to European Super League, even included a safety net for the four qualification spot for the clubs based on their past performances in the European competition, should they miss out on qualifying. But it seems that the reforms did not go far enough. So, in effect, there's some things you kind of have to, you know, battle against and fight against in terms of the common, you know, uh, theme out there at the moment. This whole thing about clubs being hit by the pandemic, I think it's a bit of a lie. Um, I think they've greatly exaggerated it. I think it's actually, what's actually happened is that the pandemic has been uh, a net negative for fans of the clubs that, you know, happen to reside in the UK because what it's shown these bigger clubs is that they don't actually need us in order to turn a profit. They don't actually need us in order to get money through the door. Um, they can still stream, you know, games, obviously selling all the TV rights. They still have the ability to sell, trans, you know, uh, kits and memorabilia and all that sort of nonsense, whatever it may be. So they've realized that they can still do that without having actual fans in the stadium. So if by a natural extension, you then have a super league where you can sell the rights to watch those games directly through your own app or through another, you know, third party app or digital streaming platform, the the potential and the earning potential for it is just limitless. Absolutely limitless. Especially if you're not really keen on actually trying to win the competition because that's never part of it. People don't mention either. There is a great the the, particip the participation fee or bonus, whatever you're meant to get from the European Super League, is so high that it makes it really um not worth it even to try to attempt to win it because you're getting paid 250 between that below is 200 million just to be in the league season in season out not on top of whatever you're going to get in terms of streaming so where will there be the need for clubs like arsenal tottenham may united to really be ambitious and try and win that european super league there's no point potential to do so and for me specifically being a Man united fan it definitely explains why there's been such a laissez-faire you know give him time attitude towards Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fair enough he's done some great things at the club but in theory we're still two and a half years into his tenure we've not won a trophy we don't look close to winning a trophy um you know the, the times that we've had been close to winning it we've failed at the semi-final hurdle he doesn't really have a you know a, a real background in winning big trophies at big clubs instead of you know if you count his time at Mulder and it seems that the club are really hell-bent on ensuring that because he's a company man he doesn't really ruffle any feathers the players seem to like him that they'd rather stick with him because they know that he can basically get us top four which essentially is paying probably uh is going a long way to ensure he keeps his job more so than actually winning the title and i think the european super league is a good example of that it definitely does reward teams to just not compete and to just live off of the past glories actually ironically enough right they're kind of banking on the legacy that they've kind of built in the past which these new owners have had no part in right the legacy of arsenal the legacy of man united um the storied legacies of these clubs um, these owners are now custodians of the club have absolutely no part in it whatsoever but they're banking on that because that's what's allowed them to be in the european super league but they're also in this new league now where you don't really require to win you just require to just you know sell the names 
basically sell the, the naming rights and kind of sell off the, the legacy of your club in order to kind of gain viewership that way. So it's a really interesting way to kind of look at football. And on the other side as well from transfers, this kind of calls into question everything concerning transfers because if we get to a point where we have a European Super League, the clubs will turn into franchise clubs similar to what they do in the NBA and the NFL. So essentially you'd have trades between certain teams. You might have draft days, which would be another potential earning um, schedule for them. Loads of really weird things that could be introduced. Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, came out recently and said that they might even be looking at shortening the actual length of the games and supposedly this is all driven by the younger generations need to have um big teams only playing season in week in week out but some would argue that part of your law of seeing a liverpool face Real Madrid is because you don't get to see it every day right the fact that you get to see those games played every week in the european super league would kind of take away the luster and the allure of you watching those games fair enough they're still going to be streamed highly because fans are going to watch but the actual appeal of these one-off games is that they're one-off they happen maybe every what one or two years or whatever it may be right in very high stakes competitions that have a lot riding on them and for it to just be in the european super league where it doesn't really make any difference if you finished 15th or first really in terms of the amount of money that you're able to make it really calls into question the idea of competition all around. And then, of course, for the league itself, you take out these top six teams for the Premier League and you kind of remove them from there. I know the other teams would be grateful because they're given the opportunity to actually win the league. But part of the reason why the league is so strong is because Burnley can go away from home and actually give United a good game. Man City could go and lose points against Fulham. That's what makes the Premier League uh, an appealing product. Once you take away those top clubs, it doesn't really make it that appealing. And then it kind of calls into question the whole allure around players and why they'd want to come up and kind of, you know, uh, play in this country in the first place, right? The reason why you'd kind of want to play your trade at West Ham if you're a Chelsea Academy player because maybe you could go and prove them wrong in terms of them letting you go you can maybe come back a second time around you can maybe be going loan to a, you know a flipping League One side and knock them out in the FA Cup whatever there are so many fairy tale stories that will be lost from the consequence of this European Super League but the most uh, appealing thing I guess from this has been the reaction from fans worldwide has been condemnation right for the most part especially in the uk fans are just not having it everyone's kind of protesting we've got fans out there in chelsea now at the moment who have basically blocked off a road and prevented the team bus from kind of going to the stadium where they're going to go face brighton i think they're playing today so there's been an actual great reaction from the fans in general and it's kind of warmed my heart to see it that this change has actually worked because according to the sources chelsea and man city are preparing their papers in terms of um you know withdrawing from this agreement i'm not too sure how likely that is because a part of me still thinks that this is inevitable anyway even if we stop it now um it's going to happen sooner rather than later the idea of a european super league these teams obviously um quite similar to what's going on with streaming you know a lot of the big artists such as drake and taylor swift are arguing that maybe the cost of their streams is far higher than the smaller artists and maybe they account for a large percentage of the user base so they should get a far bigger chunk of the revenue stream of the streaming revenue so these clubs do have a point in that regard but the whole point of a pyramid system the whole point of tiers in football is the fact that you get to spread the wealth and also it provides teams the smaller ones the opportunity to play some of these big teams and be in a competition where you can have the possibility of knocking out a Real Madrid or a Barcelona if you turn up on a day that's what makes football appealing to watch just watching the top six sides play each other week in week out is not appealing you kind of want to see your team struggle against the Sheffield United you kind of want to see them struggle against Fulham you kind of want to see them get bad against Norwich that's what makes it more appealing but here's an article here from Sky News that says Europe, uh, European Super League Chelsea preparing documents to formally withdraw from competition and obviously you've got scenes here of people protesting outside the stadium it said Chelsea are preparing documents to finally formally withdraw from the European Super League Sky News understands under Roman Abramovich is understood to have driven the decision having listened to fans protest and opted to back out which is crazy to think in it Roman Abramovich listened to his fans it will leave just five clubs Liverpool Manchester United um Arsenal and Tottenham in the breaker competition which has sparked a huge backlash since plans were announced on Sunday it comes after fans gathered outside Stanford Bishop protests on Tuesday with police forced to close roads and make a number of arrests the interesting thing about it is, is that out of all these clubs the people that probably need the European Super League the most I would say is probably Arsenal and Tottenham obviously this season Liverpool might need it because they might not finish top four but if you think about it 
Arsenal and Tottenham, especially in Tottenham's case, they haven't won jack shit. Why they even included the European Super League is beyond me. But hey, maybe they've got a global fan base that I'm really not aware of. But in terms of Arsenal, they've always qualified for the Champions League, especially when Arsenal goes around, right? Top four was kind of a trophy to him in that regard. They were able to get a lot of money from qualifying for the Champions League and kind of, you know, banking on that and using their badge and legacy and just their team as just a cash cow and not actually trying to attempt to win the competition in any meaningful way. No real investment was made into the club even though they you know built that massive stadium so if they want to just have a participation trophy and right off the back of their legacy then european super league is perfect for these kind of teams especially even you maybe save in the man city doesn't really have a long storied european legacy for the most part they're still trying to attempt to win their first european trophy that might come this season hopefully not but those are the teams that are really going to benefit from a european super league because it rewards non-competition Right? It rewards teams that have maybe done well in the past and aren't doing so well now. So they can just kind of ride off of whatever, you know, past glories that they might have continues. Supporters clutch placards that read RIP football and no to Super League ahead of tonight's game ahead Brighton and Hove Albion. The six other teams have signed up to a new competition are Super Spain's Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Real Madrid along with Italy's AC Milan, Inter Milan and Juve. At Downing Street News Conference, Boris Johnson said that the UK government would do all it can to prevent Super League from going ahead, which I'm really unsure how the legality of that works because part of me thinks if you're a European Super League, you definitely got your own lawyers to kind of dot the I's and cross the T's, right? So it's unlikely that you're going to put forward such a proposal without really knowing where you stand legally and i'm really uncertain as to whether the legality of a of a government coming in and stepping in and saying you can't form your own league how did they get to adjudicate that how did they get to kind of have a say in that whatsoever it does seem a bit odd doesn't it um it does seem a bit north korea-ish like hey you cannot do this you're prov- you, you know what you mean like because you, you have you want to keep the money in the league and again what does the government have to do with the with the streaming platforms and the tv rights for football games it opens up too many questions it's very very odd but it continues um how can it be right to have a situation in which you create a kind of cartel and stop clubs from competing against each other, playing against each other properly with the hope and excitement that gives up the fans up in another country? He said, football was invented in this country. These clubs, these names originate from famous towns and cities in our country. I don't think it's right that they should have somehow dislocated from their hometowns and home cities and turned into international brands and commodities without any reference to the fans who have loved all of them lives. Um, the Premier League said that it was considering action against the prevent um, from progressing while FIFA president Gianni Infantino warned that the clubs would have to live with the consequences of their decisions, which is the interesting part of it. A lot of people are calling for these clubs to get docked points, to get kicked out of the league, but that's never going to happen, right? If they eventually all pull out, all will be forgiven and will just kind of act like it never happened. Um, the owners will just continue living another day and it will just continue as per and it will inevitably come about one way or the other. They're going to figure out a way to make this work for sure if they do it in collaboration with uefa or european champions league whatever it may be but if anybody's holding out hope for their domestic leagues to kick out these teams who have kind of you know formed this league then you know you better just move on stop being that naive that's not going to happen they're basically kind of strong arming them into considering backing now and then once they back out everything will be okay and they might even kind of you know renegotiate the deal and make it worth their while in the long run it continues here said we just made history we just made history the news spread around Stanford bridge like wildfire chelsea just become the first club to form a withdrawal from the proposed european super league before the ball has even been kicked so so again like it, it's maybe another tale of you know um the covid right it's, it's kind of like a legacy of covid the fact that you know the, the elites the, the higher ups have basically decided to do as they please with things that you know the lower rung people like you and i have enjoy and kind of haven't considered us at all in their kind of consideration process and planning and vetting whatever may be presented to us and just hope that it will be okay and i think without the uproar without the protesting without the public figures coming out and condemning it probably would have all probably went through without a hitch definitely especially when you consider the power players are involved the money that's kind of going to be able to be generated from all these clubs it just seems like a no-brainer which is why i think in general this is probably a warning shot it's definitely something we're going to have to kind of reconcile with but i think the future does it just lends itself to this happening sometime sooner rather than later would i want it to happen of course not 
but I'm not naive enough to expect clubs that are this money hungry, clubs with fans or clubs with owners who don't have any real ties to the legacy and traditions of these clubs to do as they please with it because essentially they own it. They can do what the hell they want. You cannot stop them. Um, you've seen what Mike Ashley has done to Newcastle. He has essentially turned that club into a joke. He's got Rio Ferdinand out here defending his decision and telling fans to go and chip in money to go and buy it. You know what I mean? Just nonsense like that. So if that's happening in our own shores, just imagine what these other foreign investors and owners are doing to our clubs here as well it's just absolutely insane so again maybe it's a warning shot maybe it's a wake-up call for the league maybe we might introduce that 50 plus one law in terms of ownership in terms of making it sure that fans own a percentage of the club so the ownership doesn't leave the shores here blah -de blah 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 and it's kind of held in the hands of people that actually care about the club overall but I don't know, man. I think this is a real big warning shot. And eventually we are going to live in a world where the European Super League does exist and games, you know, home games between, you know, United and Man City are played in the middle of Dubai somewhere. Do you know what I mean? To, to a crowd of like 10 streamed to a crowd of millions. Um, that's possibly on the occasion or on the cards, I think, going forward. But again, good to see fans protesting and kicking up a bit of a fuss because effectively that has definitely led to what we're seeing going forward now with um, these teams pulling out and deciding, you know what, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do